events in social media. Half a day, welcome to Weekend Edition. Glad you could join us. What's typically a time of joy for many is a time of heightened stress and emotion for others. And with the pandemic stealing more than the holiday spirit, the Guam Behavioral Health and Wellness Center is reaching out to those coping with COVID this Christmas. Tyler Matanani has the report. It's a stigma that the Guam Behavior Health and Wellness Center, or Jibwick, continues to fight. I don't need to call. I can handle this. I say there is no one who, there, everyone needs somebody at a given time in their life to help them navigate through difficult times. Jibwick director Therese Ariola explains how for many, stress, depression, and anxiety can peak around this time of the year, bringing on what is known as the holiday blues. According to the National Alliance on Mental Illness, 64% of people with mental illness report holidays make their conditions worse. Those people who throughout the year have been feeling lonely or depressed, that has a heightened experience during the holiday season. The Jibwick receives an average of 500 calls a month, or approximately 125 calls a week, with the holidays bringing a spike in that number. But they're expecting an even higher surge by the end of the month due to the side effects brought on by the pandemic. Ariola says their trained staff and translation services are ready to provide comfort to all in need during these trying times and encourages the community to reach out to their 24-hour crisis hotline at 647-8833. If you're okay with going to the doctor, if you break an arm or, you know, or break a leg, we don't think twice, oh, go to the doctor, you know, go to the regular medical doctor. This is just another type of doctor, you know, somebody who can help you navigate your feelings and your emotions. For an island in need of strength, the Guam Behavior Health and Wellness Center offers hope this holiday season. Reporting for Guam's News Network, I'm Tyler Matanani. Now let's take a look at how COVID has affected our marine life. Earlier this year, viral videos from around the world surfaced showing marine life flourishing with the stay-at-home orders in place. Fewer disturbances, pollution and human interference allowed Mother Nature to repair itself. Department of Agriculture's fisheries biologist Brent Tibbetts says the gloomy weather lately has also been a positive for our coral reef. It's keeping sun exposure low and it's keeping temperatures low and so the corals are benefiting from that. It's, it's actually helping to postpone or, or at least minimize uh, coral bleaching that we might be expecting this year. Typically, the Department of Agriculture conducts surveys with fishermen to get a pulse on how things are going. But with social distancing, they've changed their approach, but it'll be some time before we can get hard data on the effects of COVID on our marine life. We'll probably have to take you know, a little while longer of collecting that information before we can really compare it to previous year's data to see what changes there are, if anything. Recently, a law was passed banning the practice of scuba spearfishing, and according to Tibbetts, they'll be monitoring specific areas to compare the data. So that has uh, reduced that type of fishing, uh, spear, scuba spear fishing, which should give refuge to fish below a certain depth, um, as, as well as fish of a certain size. We do have uh, a monitoring plan when, when things get up normal again. We're going to be starting to monitor areas where scuba spear fishing had been happening prior to the passage of this law and see if we can detect any change in fish populations. And as far as population is concerned, one species in particular could be disastrous if their population gets out of hand, and that's the crown of thorns starfish. We've had reports in the last month or so, a couple of locations that have had uh, unusually high numbers of crown of thorns starfish. Now, there is a program in place to go out and address that when corner, uh, uh, an outbreak of crown of thorns is seen. There's a program where people go, go out and actually uh, kill the crown of thorns to help uh, reduce the amount of damage that they, they do on a reef. Uh, one or two crown of thorns is normal on a coral reef. They're, they're, they're in small numbers, they are normal, but things happen to cause them to go through a population explosion and then they can cause some serious damage. But with less traffic at our beaches, there have been some pretty amazing sightings. I got a report of two sea turtles in Tumon right near the beach, uh, which is uncommon. Generally, we only see turtles over the reef in Tumon. And 
to see them in close is, is an unusual thing. And, and I had a report this morning of a couple. So that might be in response to less bodies in the water as well. And that's a good sign too, turtles coming in close like that. Tibbetts also cautioned beachgoers to be aware of the man of war jellyfish that have been spotted and typically have a presence until February. If you have some sighting that you'd like to report or if you see any crown of thorns starfish or coral bleaching, be sure to email fisheries at doag.guam.gov. Through strong community connections, passionate volunteers, and generous donors, Guam's nonprofit animal shelter, Guam's, Guam Animals in Need, continues the work of caring and providing loving homes to the island's stray animals. Recently, the shelter received a contribution of $500 along with dog food and other supplies from a generous community benefactor. Gaines Executive Director, Allison Hadley. We got this awesome donation from the Taipei uh, Economic and Cultural Office in Guam. They emailed us just kind of out of the blue and um, they wanted to get involved and have some uh, connection with us. Um, they have a new president, Mr. Chen, and he's been on island just for a couple of months now. And, you know, he has seen the, the stray dog problem on island and <clears throat> he had spent some time in L.A. And so he, you know, awesome, doing some awesome work at um, some shelters and rescues out there. So he just really wanted to help and introduce himself. That same day, Hadley says the shelter received another donation from Island Certs and expressed their gratitude over community members always thinking of them and the animals. The shelter has currently restricted foot traffic and although... And all the adoptable animals are placed in foster homes. However, Gain is still receiving animal emergencies, but they can't do it alone. We have noticed that we're a little bit low on dog food. Um, and that is something that, you know, we have to think about in anticipation of opening back up again. Cat litter is always on that list. Bleach is always on that list. If you're interested in fostering or donating to the, to the shelter, you're encouraged to join the Gain Foster Network Facebook page or send them a message on their social media platforms of Instagram at Guam Animals and Facebook at Guam Animals in Need. Now is the time for our weekly Just for Kids segment. Sharing with us another holiday recipe is Kiki Leon Guerrero. <laughs> Stay tuned next on Weekend Edition. We have Trend Spotting with Tyler Matanani and still to come, Sports with Dave Delgado. Get up to the minute news, plus access to alerts, streaming radio, promotions, and more on your mobile device by downloading the KUAM News mobile app, available at the App Store now. While we've all been through a lot over the years, typhoons, earthquakes, and now COVID-19, we've been able to get through these together. For more than 80 years, Pablo's Insurance has been protecting your homes, 
your businesses. And the health of your family. We are here today and we'll be here tomorrow. There are better days ahead. Tomorrow's a new day filled with hope and choices. The possibilities of what we can achieve together are limitless. Let's continue to work together to ensure a brighter tomorrow for all of us. It makes myself and it makes my team members very proud to work for an organization that has been on island for many years with its focus on reliability, dependability, and commitment to the communities that they operate in. Matson's a great corporate citizen to the community. We all benefit from any sort of environmental commitment we make. One of the ways that we do that is with our Adahi Utano program. There's action behind it, and so action breeds commitment. With the Kaimana Gila coming to Guam, this brings a new age and modernization to the island. It's exciting for me because it's a brand new ship and we can carry more freight into the island. It just shows growth for Guam and Micronesia. Matson would be nothing without its customers and we hope to continue to serve you for decades to come. So here at Hunter Speaks, we're committed to providing continuous therapy so our kids can still afford the learning opportunities that they need for those critical life skills. Um, the children we serve are individuals on the autism spectrum. What's so beautiful for our organization is that this is a gift. When you teach a child a skill or when they learn something new, it's the gift that keeps on giving. Nobody can take that away. When you teach somebody a way to communicate, they have that skill for the rest of their lives. Hafidei Guam, we celebrated big news this week with a breakthrough in the coronavirus. And there's still a lot of holiday cheer to go around. I'm Tyler Matsunani, and here's your trend spotting report. A countdown to a quick pinch that's bringing hope. In perhaps one of the most anticipated moments of the year, Guam received its first COVID-19 vaccine this week, followed by distribution to healthcare workers. The Pfizer vaccine was recently given emergency use authorization by the FDA to be used to prevent the spread of COVID. The first three people to receive the vaccine, which took place at Ukudu High School, was Public Health Director Art St. Augustine, Dr. Bob Leon Guerrero, and Zania Pasina, a nurse from Public Health's Research Command. After 10 overwhelming months of the deadly virus, Pasina teared up as she was interviewed about the possibilities. I will not forget the first day that they called us in and um, we thought, oh my gosh, this is the end of the world, it's the end of the world. People talk about getting back to the state of normalcy. I don't want a state of normalcy, I want normal. Dr. Leon Guerrero said he was excited to learn he would be one of the first to receive the vaccine and prayed on it. He also admitted he was a little scared to take the new drug, but in this case, the good outweighs the bad. And without this vaccine, it's not gonna happen. Without this vaccine, you're not going to be able to hug other people outside your house. We're going to take a look at some of the comments, and there were quite a few of you who were a little apprehensive about the vaccines, while others are ready to embrace. Ann Wolford said, it's not even FDA approved, so I'll pass. No way in hell am I going to be anyone's guinea pig. Meanwhile, Stephen Davis saying, don't listen to people who know nothing or have no medical experience in the field. Do what you got to do for you, not them. And Max Scambio making a Hunger Games reference saying, I volunteer as tribute. Now that was the holiday gift we all kind of need. And moving into the holidays, the Jewish community of Guam welcomed the arrival of a Torah scroll to be kept on island right on time for Hanukkah. A candlelight ceremony was held at the Mungmung Totomaiti Community Center for the Torah with Rabbi Akiva Ben Ezra on hand. Hanukkah is the sacred Jewish tradition the Festival of the Lights, which lasts for eight days. This year, Hanukkah ended on Friday, December 18. Guam Bomb 503 chimed in and said, Awesome! Thank you, Rabbi Akiva, for your service and to all the brothers and sisters for the warm welcome. Praise God! Another user adding, Well, that's cool. I didn't know we had a Jewish community. Happy Hanukkah! 
And Princess Matonia adding, that's nice. Blessings be upon the Jewish community of Guam. Sharing in the hospital spirit, the Guam Memorial Hospital Volunteer Association worked tirelessly on a Christmas display outside GMH. The association's display is sponsored by Cars Plus, Guam Windward Memorial, Eddie and Claire Cruz of Eddie Cruz Hardfill, and Mayor Johnny Kanata of Umatic. The wonderful display with lights, a bright tree, and a large nativity set aims to brighten the spirits and bring a sense of hope for those working on the front lines and affected by the pandemic. Online Jen is fine said, hope it brings a little joy to all. And another user adding, nice display, please add a spotlight to Santa at the front. I got scared for a second that he was a real hitchhiker. And in our neck of the woods, we want you to watch some of the luckiest kids this year who will get their chance to talk to Santa in a Zoom party. It's part of our Letters to Santa campaign where kids can write to Santa via the KUAM website. Several of those lucky little ones who sent in letters were selected for the party, which will be aired on December 21st. Let's listen to the big man himself. Ho, 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 and half a day. Join me for Letters to Santa, and I'll read your letters on the air, and we have a few special surprises for you, too, all on December 21st at 6.30 p.m. right here on KUAM-TV. Thanks to our friends from Dial Rent to Own. December 21st at 6.30, I'll see you then. And everybody, Merry Christmas. Ho, ho, ho. We may be finally turning the corner in this devastating pandemic, but remember, even with the vaccine, we must still wear our mask, wash our hands, and watch our distance. We do this, and we can safely celebrate the holidays with our family. Happy holidays and adios. Guam's auto appearance specialist, Elegant Reflections, has been providing the automotive industry with professional detailing and car care products at its highest quality from complete detailing, full interior detailing, exterior detailing, headlamp restoration, hand washing, seat and carpet shampoo, engine degreasing, undercarriage cleaning, paint sealant, fabric protection, paint oxidation removal, and so much more. Visit us at our new location. Call 646-5555 for an appointment. Elegant Reflections, Guam's auto appearance specialist. Over 20 years of experience. We're doing a good job, Guam. In the past couple of weeks, we've managed to keep the car score below five. Together, we rose to the challenge when the governor asked us all to strive for five. In the past couple of weeks, we've not only brought the car score way down from being in the high 40s to below five, we've shown the governor that we're capable of altering the course of this pandemic. We were on a path to uncertainty, but now because of all of our actions, we're doing better. But better doesn't necessarily mean that we are out of the woods. We still need to watch our distance, wash our hands, and wear our masks. So please keep striving, Guam. We, we got, got this. this. What's up, Guam? Welcome to KUAM Sports. Dave Delgado here with college football player DeAndre Cruz and coach Chad Ike. We're here to talk about DeAndre's grind, uh, still putting in that work, waiting for a call, finishing your final JUCO football season. Tell us uh, what you've been up to. So actually, I was supposed to play my last season next spring, but they just told me that it was canceled like last week. So I was out here getting ready for that. And then just going to finish up my classes, um, stay training with Coach Chad and just get, getting ready for whoever offers. Walk us through that phone call. Uh, did you hit up Coach Chad, and uh, what, what did you ask him, and what did you tell him? Oh, I just um, – I always uh, keep up with Coach Chad. I send him, like, my workouts when I was on Guam, and we always talked about me going out there to Ar – or coming out here to Arizona to train. So I messaged him that I wanted to come out here, get ready for my season. You know, Coach Chad, he's, like, family to me. And he said, of course, just come whenever you can. And, yep, here I am. Coach, you've seen the progress that – DeAndre's made since his high school playing days with uh, the Father Duenas Friars. What was that conversation like speaking to him again? Well, I mean, you know, like D said, we always kept in contact. I met DeAndre back uh, when he was just an eighth grader getting ready to go into his freshman year at FD. And, 
then I had the opportunity to work with him, uh, him going into his junior year, going into his junior year, the summer of his junior year, going into his junior year. So, uh, you know, it was just a matter of, you know, uh, I know he has the capabilities. He has all the talent in the world and, and just kind of want to make sure we get his mindset uh, that, you know, he knows that he can do what he, whatever he sets his mind to. So, I told him, I'm like, you know, whenever he's ready to get on the grind, just come out here. We'll, we'll get him ready for whatever uh, happens. And this whole COVID thing kind of threw everything in a you know, curveball to everybody. So we just kind of make do what we can right now. DeAndre, I've seen the videos, mm-hmm. all the posts. Being in an atmosphere like that with elite level athletes from mixed martial arts to football and all types of sports over there, that gym setting and, and the atmosphere there must be pretty motivating for you. It's, um, it's nice seeing a lot of um, great athletes. Uh, just seeing what their uh, daily routine is, their workouts, how they train, and even talking to them about their mindset to what they're doing and why they're doing it. It's a good atmosphere to be around. Now, you've put on over 10 to 15 pounds since your last JUCO season. Mm -hmm. Your strength is shot up. Let's talk about some of the numbers when it comes to your bench, deadlift, and squat. Uh, We do a lot of uh, different variations of the workouts. So, I don't know, Coach Chad, what would you say my – numbers would be like our emphasis really isn't on numbers but although Diaga is you know crazy strong right the other day snatched 255 uh he got close to 345 clean um his bench was you know with the chains on huh yeah 315 with the chains the 315 with the chains the the chains about 80 pounds so you're talking about like you know almost 400 pounds with the chains on the on the bench but he kind of got buried a little bit on that one but (laughs) uh, you know so you know uh, he's pretty up there you know getting close to touching that 400 pounds um, the, the, the guy's got legs like no other, right? And that's why I think, you know, he fits that mode of being an inside linebacker. He, 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 he'll he easily squat over 500 pounds if it was to max him out. But, you know, he had 405 and we had band tension and chain tension. So it was well over, you know, 500, probably 550 pounds uh, plus of tension on there. So guy's the limit. But, you know, it's not about, I'm not trying to build a power lifter or weight lifter from him. Um, it's just trying to maximize his own physical strengths. Uh, so that way he can, you know, transition that and, you know, put that to use on the football field. Did the workouts really change much working with him as a running back now working with him as a linebacker? Uh, you know, not a whole lot as far as, uh, you know, developing power, developing explosive power and developing strength and speed. Um, that's all components of athleticism and in, in, especially in the sport of football. Um, what did di- what did make a difference is just him learning opening his hips up and, you know, backpedaling, coming out of his brakes versus running downhill and trying to make a cut or run somebody over. He still has to run somebody over, but uh, this time he's at a disadvantage now because the guy's going to have a bigger head start than he has. So, you know, it's important for him to be extremely strong because... You know, like I said, guys are coming downhill, and then he now he's got to take up 300-pound linebackers that are coming up and, you know, scraping up to the next level and trying to get him on his back. So, uh, you know, it's kind of one of those things that that's pretty much the difference is the field work, you know, him learning that. But the big the big key is, you know, he's just got to learn the, the playbook, and that's something he's going to have to get into wherever program he gets him because everybody's playbook and terminology and things like that are different. And football is that, you know, the, his football IQ needs to improve a lot. Uh, you know, coming from Guam, it's, you know, basic fundamental things there um but up here obviously the the play calling and the play uh, the the scheming and everything like that is so far advanced that he's gonna have to play catch up from that standpoint but from a physical standpoint he's he's up there with the best guys you know and so that's going to be his big challenge right now is just picking up that football iq any communications with coaches at any school right now for you deandre um not really i was talking to um the coaches from adam state and they've been looking at me to go there next semester but i'm still um deciding on that whether to go there or finish at southwestern and how's school going for you maintaining grades and just making sure you're on top of things oh yeah my grades are looking good i always make sure i stay on top of that i'm getting like a 3.5 right now so i just have a few more classes to finish up and i'll be getting my associate's degree and i'll be able to transfer out d you know he's a he's a chamorro chamorro boy so his mom would whoop his dog in oh, yeah. if he didn't keep his grades <laughs> up and grandpa <laughs> <Definitely>. too <laughs> he has the potential to you know, be at that D1 level. Oh, absolutely. And, you know, like I said, DeAndre, uh, you know, he listened, you know, you know, I, you know, I've been going back and forth to Guam for, man, like seven years already or so that, you know, putting on camps and clinics. And like I said, you know, I met DeAndre going into his ninth grade. It was just like six or seven of those guys. You know, he was one of the kids. I said, hey, man, you have all the potential in the world, but it's a matter of what you do with it, you know? And, you know, there's a lot of talent on Guam. And DeAndre was one of the ones that actually took it to heart, listened, followed the path. And the big 
interesting part of it is actually his, his, his home. You know, his mom, Millie, and, and his grandma, grandpa, and his family really kept him the course and, and pushed him the, 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 the direction that he needed to go, surround himself with people that would lead him the right direction. And, you know, it's difficult. It's, it's very hard to be different. And DeAndre had to be different. He had to have a different mindset. Otherwise, you know, he could have easily just kind of uh, straight off the path. And, you know, nothing wrong with, with uh, doing what other people were doing and things like that. But when God gives you a certain gift and talent, you want to really take advantage of what you're given. And, and DeAndre listened to that path and he's made tremendous improvements. And, you know, his, he's still writing his future. He's, he's, you know, writing his legacy right now. I mean, he's already one of the best, if not in my consideration, the best four players has ever come, you know, through Guam roots, right? Uh, from from uh, day one, right? The day he was there playing youth, you know, cowboy football down south. And if he wanted to, if coach let him play all four quarters, no, he, nobody would ever touch his records. But, you know, DeAndre played freaking two quarters basically every year uh, when he was a starting running back. He would have had, you know, 4,000, 5,000 rushing yards if he played, you know, the whole game. And before we close out the news tonight, the latest round of birthday shoutouts from the Coldstone Creamery Birthday Club. Your Saturday birthday shoutouts go like this. Happy birthday to Christopher Lozano, who celebrates birthday number 29. Happy birthday, blessings, 29-year-old. Love your adoring familia. And on Sunday, December 20th, happy birthday to Connor Tahazi. Happy birthday to my grandson. Jacob B. Tahazi from your very adoring grandparents. And Kaluas and Augustine, happy, happy second birthday to our Lula. With love from your entire family. We hope all of you had an amazing birthday. Remember, you can be a part of the Cold Stone Creamery Birthday Club by registering online at KUAM.com. Please make sure to include with your photo your name and your birth date. That's all the time we have from all of us here at Guam's News Network. Thank you for watching and have a safe weekend. We close out with another round of Making Spirits Bright. Good night.